Hello friends, welcome to the next segment of uh, application of polymers. Here we are going to discuss the polymer application in different fields, specifically in polymer in textile under the edges of polymer process engineering. So let us have a look about that what we are going to discuss in this particular table, uh, in this particular lecture. We are going to have an introduction of the polymer which are used in the textile of application. We will discuss about the brief history of man-made fibers. Apart from this, we will discuss the various terminologies and definitions being used in such kind of a context. We will have a brief outlook about uh, fiber manufacturing. Then how do we characterize and testing uh, pattern of the textile fibers we are going to discuss. Then we will discuss uh, the man-made fibers spe specifically used in the textile industries. And apart from this, we will have a brief outlook about the high performance fibers. Now the polymeric fabrics, uh, whether natural or synthetic, they constitute the backbone of textile fabrics. In fact, uh, it is the versatility of the polymer material that and their ability to be shaped into uh, fibers of different geometries and sizes that confer on textile their unique properties. The final properties of the textile fabric, usually they are determined by the method of preparation or method of constructing of these fibers into a fabric as well as the finishing process. Natural fibers like cotton, they have been used by various civilizations since ages or for thousands of years. Uh, in applications like clothing, home furnishing, building materials, likewise. There are so many agricultural fibers like straw. They were mixed with the clay by the Egyptians to make wall and a building structures. The Chinese cultivated the hemp, a natural fiber as early as 2800 BC. Along with the Greek, the Chinese also used wool to make non-woven felted materials. Natural fibers, they were, had several shortcomings that limited their use and made them inadequate for certain textile applications. It was well known, for example, that cotton and a linen had a wrinkling problem upon wearing and washing, while wool had a shrinkage problem and could be irritating to the touch. Now, we are focusing this particular lecture on the man-made fiber, also known as the manufactured fiber. And more specifically, this uh, particular segment focuses on the use of polymeric material to the manufacture of synthetic fiber for textile application. The technical textile, this covers the application like medical, military, transportation, building, modern apparels and consumer goods. Now, ultimately, in this particular segment, we will venture into the modern application and the potential to develop the polymeric materials to meet demanding and challenging the textile for the future. So let us start with the brief history of man-made fiber. The story of polymer based man-made fiber is started to take shape in early 1800th century. The, the, the chardonnay a French chemist started a series of trials attempting to produce the artificial silk from dissolved nitrocellulose. Cardonet introduced his artificial silk fabric at the Paris exhibition in 1889 and later succeeded in establishing the first commercial scale production plant of rayon in France. In the United States, the first commercial production of artificial silk did not begin with the until American Viscous Company opened a rayon plant in 1910. Now, before conquering the textile fiber market, cellulose acetate was made a dope for airplane wing in England. In 1920, also witnessed the recognition for the first time by Herman Stoddinger for the manufacturing uh, of the macromolecular nature of the polymer structure. 
The discovery rewarded by the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1952 paved the way for the eventual establishment and the fast growth of the polymer and synthetic fiber industries. Carothers synthesized the polyamide 66 known as nylon 66 which revolutionized the synthetic fiber industry. The fibers. Now let us talk about the terminologies and definitions. The fibers, whether the natural such as cotton or wool or synthetic such as polyester or polypropylene, they are the fundamental building blocks of any textile product. Fibers are characterized by large length to diameter ratio before being knitted or woven into the fabric. Textile fiber can exist in various forms. It is therefore important to make the distinction between the certain textile terms like filament. A single fiber continuous length, it is sometimes called the monofilament. The filament yarn, a number of continuous filaments held together by twisting or other methods. The filament toe, the large bundle or filament held together without twisting. The stipple fiber, the shortcut fiber with a specific length made from a filament toe, the packaged in the bales of a stipple fiber before textile processing. Spun yarn. The staple fiber is sometimes spun for easy processing on cards and other textile machinery. The textured filament yarn. The filament yarn when it is twisted and manipulated in order to impart texture and a bulk to it before being used in a textile fabric. Non-womens. Non-womens are engineered fabric structures made directly from fibers to from a web and that is itself made up of uh, fibers. The Textile Institute defines the non-woman as a textile structure made directly from fiber rather than yarn. Fabrics are normally made from continuous filament uh, or from fiber webs or stretched by bonding using various techniques. Now these include the adhesive bonding, mechanical interlocking by needling or fluid jet entanglement thermal bonding and stitch bonding. Let us talk about the fiber manufacturing. The conversion process of polymers into the fiber depends on the polymer type and the chemical structure. And there are four types of fiber spinning processes commonly used for the fiber industry name the melt spinning, the dry spinning, the wet spinning and the gel spinning. More recently, electro spinning has gained more and more impetus as a way of to make the fiber in nano scale. Now let us talk about the melt spinning. The melt spinning is the most common process used to make the textile type polymer fibers. Almost any thermoplastic polymer, the thermoplastic is a polymer that are able to flow upon heating and readily shaped into the various form as the polymer melt is cooled down. Now the thermoplastic polymer is made into the fiber form via melt spinning with varying degree of difficulty. The melt spinning of polymer into the continuous filament YAR consists of four steps. One is the melting of polymer pallets in an extruder and pushing it through a spinner, a spinneret that consists of tiny holes evenly distributed through the surface. Now this is the spinneret, so this is the polymer melt subjected to this one, this is the filter and metering pump and air is being quenched and this convergence guide goes into the spin bobbin. Then spinneret, this is the pack of polymeric filament and solidifying the filament existing uh, the spinneret using the cool air and collecting them in a bundle on a rotating roll. The drawing the filament between the two rolls of different speed in order to orient the molecule and increase the filament strength. The heat setting of the filament and collecting them into the bobbins on a wind up roll for further textile processing. The drawing of extruded fibers is an important industrial fiber manufacturing process in order to impart the required tenacity and strength to the fiber. In the case of semi-crystalline thermoplastics such as polyester, polypropylene drawing orients the polymer chain and extend them uh, in drawing direction which results the high percentage of crystallinity and strong fiber. The stable fiber is made from a spun bundle of uh, fibers that are collected in large cans from several parallel extruders in the form of large toe. 
Now, this particular figure shows the significant effect of uh, orientation on polypropylene fiber tenacity and elongation also. The highly oriented yarn becomes extremely strong height is uh, high tenacity while having a high modulus and low elongation to break sometimes referred as EB. Now, when uh, polymers cannot be melted in a melt spinning process and an adequate solvent is chosen to dissolve the polymer and that is under the dry spinning. The solution is then extruded through a spinneret. As the fiber exit the spinneret, the solvent evaporated. Here you see that this is the spinneret, this is a polymer solution and these are the heating jack jackets for this one and this then is pulled. And when the solvent is evaporated, the dry filament collected and on a bobbin and dry spinning has a relatively low spinning speed than those of melt spinning. Example of this category, they are acetate and acrylics. Let us talk about the wet spinning. In wet spinning, the polymer is dissolved in a solvent, but instead of being um, extruded into the hot air, it is extruded into the liquid bath. Here, this is the coagulation bath and this is a spinner jet and other things are same like dough filters and then the protofibers. And now, it is uh, the, the solvent is then removed chemically in the bath as opposed to the being evaporated in a dry spinning. The speed used uh, are low in wet spinning and the filament are oriented after the bath in order to impart the strength on them. Aramid, spandex, and modern acrylic uh, fil uh, fibers, they are made by wet spinning. The gel spinning process, the gel spinning process consists of extruding a heated gel such as uh, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene through a spinneret drawing through uh, air and cooling it down in a water bath. The key in the gel spinning is to separate the molecular chains in the solvent to minimize the entanglement and give the chain a chance to achieve a high degree of orientation. Now, let us talk about the characterization and testing of textile fiber. The polymeric fibers, they are characterized for the purpose of identification, quality control and fabric design using the standard test method. The most tests are common into all textile fiber while other to specific in the certain polymer types. Some common tests and fiber properties that are important to understand before the detailed discussion of a specific type of uh, fibers and their characterization will take place. Now, let us talk about the density while discussing the characterization of textile fiber. The density of fiber is usually measured in terms of a quantity called denier. The denier is measure of linear density of the fiber and it is defined as the weight in gram of 9000 meter of fiber. For the same type of a fiber, the larger the diameter is the bigger the denier. Because the fiber are usually bundled into yarns that term total denier is used and is referred to the denier of the yarn. The term denier per filament is a common term in the fiber industry and it refers to the denier of a single filament and it is equal to the total denier divided by the number of filament in the yarn. Let us talk about the mechanical properties, the tenacity. The tenacity is the stress at which the fiber breaks expressed in, in gram per denier. The elongation at break. EB is measure of the extensibility of the fiber and its ability to stretch before breaking. The EB is derived from the stress strain curve and this EB of the textile fiber depends on the stretching and drawing of the fiber and on the heating uh, heat setting at the end of the fiber making process. The extensibility of is also important in order to allow the fiber to go through the subsequent textile machinery and processes without breakage. Let us talk about the fiber structure and morphology. In addition to the chemical structure of the fiber forming polymer, the fiber morphology plays a significant role in determining the ultimate strength and extensibility or elasticity of a fiber. The morphology is also important in determining the ability of the fiber to be dyed or penetrated by pigment. 
In the case of melt spinning of semi-crystalline thermoplastics such as polyester or a nylon, the final morphology of the fiber is dictated by polymer chemical structure, melt spinning conditions like spinning speed, cooling type, cooling rate, all these factors are contributing factor. Drawing conditions like draw ratio, heat setting, temperature relaxation, all these things are the contributing ratio. The relative amount of amorphous and crystalline region as well as the type of the crystal and their arrangement along the fiber length usually determines determine the mechanical behavior. The high draw ratios are necessary to obtain the high crystalline strong fiber. Now, this particular figure shows the morphology of the polyester fiber and a typical distribution of crystalline and amorphous region and the orientation of crystal along the fiber length. Let us talk about the fiber identification. The fiber industry uses several techniques to identify the fibers and distinguish them from one another. Some of the most common method includes microscopic examination, solubility test, heating and flammability test, density and staining techniques. Let us talk about the microscopy test. This optical microscope is the useful tool in any lab to examine the textile fiber and identify them. It is easier to identify natural fiber than synthetic one because uh, the similarity in the synthetic fiber appearance. Shape and cross section, they are the common characteristics to examine under the microscope. Chemical test, the solubility is a highly effective test to identify fibers. The chemical structure of the polymer determines its resistance to solvent and other chemicals. The polyolefins, for example, the excellent chemical resistance to most common solvent. Functional groups, they can also be identified using techniques like FTIR, which will help to identify the fiber type. The density test, the fiber density is an indication of the type of fiber being identified. Polyolefin fibers, for example, they will float in water, which is unique characteristics. Stain test. This test is based on the affinity of various fiber towards the different dyes. A series of dyes that have known affinity for specific fibers, they are prepared and the fiber is immersed to check its dye pickup. The morphology of the fiber and its chemical structure determine its dyeability and hydrophilicity. The burn test. When in contact with an open flame, the different fiber may generate with a different type of a flame color, ash and smell. Let us talk about uh, the man-made fiber. According to a report by Grandview Research Incorporation, the global synthetic fiber market is expected to reach about uh, 88.5 billion dollars by the year 2025. Now, the industry is expected to grow at an annual rate of 6.3, largely driven by the growth in polyester. For each fiber type, the base polymer, the unique characteristic and the main uses application, which are enlisted like chemistry. Now, especially pertaining to the polyester, when we talk about the chemistry, the polyester fiber is defined as per the Federal Trade Commission, United States, as a manufactured fiber in which the fiber forming substance in, is any long chain synthetic polymer composed of at least 85% by weight of an ester of a dialcohol and terephthalic acid. The most common polyester fiber is made from polyethylene terephthalate PET. This is the chemical structure of PET. Now, PET is a polymer made through the condensation polymerization of ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid. When we talk about the poly properties, the polyester fiber have a smooth surface and are usually round and uniform. The polyester fibers are sometimes blended with the cotton to balance the fiber properties often to the expense of uh, the qualities of cotton such as breathability and heat resistance. Some of the characteristics of the pet fibers are known. For in this includes the good strength and resistance for stretching and shrinking, good abrasion resistance and the chemical re resistance, excellent wrinkle resistance, quick drying, moderate 
resili resilience aspect both dry and wet. There are various uses attributed to the polyesters. Polyester fibers were first manufactured by DuPont in 1953. Since then the demand for polyester fiber has increased steadily. The polyester they are widely used in technical textile especially fully oriented fibers with high tenacity. The transportation the in transportation the polyester filament they are well established as a reinforcement in the rubber in tires. Polyester is also popular in home furnishings such as blankets, bedroom, sheets and cushions. Polyester tire cords are durable and heat resistant. Polybutylene terphthalate, this is another type of a polyester fiber which is used in the V belts and other type of belts in automobile. The polyester fabrics, they are an excellent choice of sail cloth due to the durability and high modulus and low cost. Now, they, this is uh, this figure shows the sail cloth made from high tenacity. The pet in the building and construction, the pit as uh, be non women represent the material of choice for roofing and geotextiling application. The pet non women are also used as a liquid filtration media for pool and spa filter cartridge as per this particular figure, and this is a very common figure. Let us talk about the nylon. The nylon as per the Federal Trade Commission is a manufactured fiber which uh, the fiber forming substance uh, is any long chain synthetic polyamide having recurring amide group as an integral part of uh, polyester polymer chain. Now nylon 66 and nylon 6 they are the most common type of a nylon fiber this is represent nylon 66. Nylon 66 is made uh, via polycondensation of uh, hexamethylene diamine and adipic acid and nylon 6 uh, on the other hand is made uh, via ring opening polymerization of caprolactam. There are some unique properties attributed to a nylon fiber. One is that excellent combination of strength and elasticity, excellent resiliency, good abrasion resistance, excellent wrinkle resistance good flame resistance and nylon fibers they are also known to have a poor resistance to sunlight and are prone to UV and thermal degradation and nylon 66 owes the high tenacity in part to hydrogen bonding which increases the percentage of crystallinity in the polymer chain. Nylon fiber is widely used in carpets, upholstery, hosiery, raincoats, sewing threads. It is the most expensive than uh, uh, it is more expensive than polyester. So, several textile applications have switched to polyester fibers. Nylon however remains uh, the fiber of choice for various technical textile applications. In automobile, nylon fiber is used as a fabric for airbags and seat belts and it is also used as a tire cord for rubber reinforcement. In civil and military application, nylon fiber is widely used as a tent, ropes, parachute canopies and, uh, and harnesses. There are certain high performance fibers. The high performance fiber they are the class of polymeric fibers with high temperature and superior mechanical performance characteristics that are not achievable with some of the more conventional fibers. The most common ones are aramid that is Nomex and Kevlar. But this class is also in, includes fibers such as uh, polyphenylene sulfide PPS, polyether ether ketones P. The high performance fibers uh, are the material of choice for demanding military and uh, security applications uh, both in marine and terrestrial uh, environment. Uh, when we talk about the uh, high performance uh, fibers, the aramids play a very vital role. These aramids are simply aromatic polyamides uh, and the fiber forming substance is a polyamide where the amide group on the polymer chain have two aromatic rings adjacently attached in both sides. Here you can see the meta form of aramid Nomex is known for its high temperature resistance and is widely used in protecting clothing. The para form of uh, aramid Kevlar is known for high strength and modulus and is widely used in bulletproof vests. There are various uh, major properties attributed to the aramid fibers are high temperature resistance, excellent 
perfect uh, strength and stiffness, excellent dimensional stability, low flammability, excellent heat resistance, good chemical resistance, bulletproofing, cut resistance. They can be used uh, as a Kevlar and Nomex in high temperature and mechanically demanding applications and Nomex is a fiber of choice for firefighter suits due to its excellent heat resistance and it is also used in space suits, heat resistance gloves and filters. Kevlar, this is used in the bulletproof vest. There are certain gloves, reinforcement for the hoses, tires, belts, ropes and advanced composites. Let us talk about the carbon fibers. The carbon fibers are among the strongest man-made fiber available. Their performance is unmatched in terms of strength to weight ratio while they have excellent rigidity. The carbon fibers are made from what is known as precursor which is either pan or rayon. The pan is spun into the filament which, is, which are collected in a flat toe that is heated in the absence of oxygen in a pyrolysis step that removes all non-carbon atom and silicon based finishes are usually used to lubricate the filament and prevent them from sticking to each other curing process, during the process. The carbon fibers, they are uniquely known for superior strength and stiffness at a low weight, light weight, excellent fatigue resistance, corrosion resistance, chemical inertness. They are, uh, they can be used or uh, they can be woven into the, the bi-directional sheets that are later impregnated with epoxy resin to cure, to make the kyber, carbon fiber reinforced plastics and which can be used for different type of a molded parts. The carbon fiber composites, they are used as a frame and a panel in a wide body airplanes and space rockets. Other uses are various parts in the military and racing vehicles. These carbon fiber reinforced plastics are also used in sporting equipments like bicycle, fishing rods, tennis rackets and hockey sticks. Let us talk about the polyolefins. The, the polyolefins fiber, they have the clear cost advantage compared to other synthetic fiber. They also possess uh, unique properties. The polypropylene is more popular than the polyethylene in textile application but both have relatively low melt points compared to other synthetic fiber which is a drawback. As per the United States Federal Trade Commission's official definition, an olefinic fiber is a manufactured fiber in which the fiber forming substance is any long chain synthetic polymer composed of at least 85% by weight of the ethylene, propylene and other olefinic units. So this is the polyethylene chemical and this is the polypropylene chemist chemical structure. The polyolefinic uh, fibers, polyethylene or polypropylene, they are known to have a good tensile strength, toughness, abrasion resistance, chemical resistance, but this means that they are difficult to dye, which is a drawback of the polyolefinic fibers. General textile use polypropylene fiber can have a tendency of uh, um, uh, 40.5 to 50 EN per dtex, whereas the high tensity uh, yarn use the ropes and nets can have the tenacities up to 81. The polyethylene high density soften, uh, softens at uh, 130 degrees Celsius and melts around 140 degrees Celsius, whereas the polypropylene soften, soften at uh, 150 degrees Celsius and melts around 160 degrees Celsius. A summary of some of the main properties and character, uh, characteristics of polyolefin is like they have the light weights, the polyolefinic fibers have the lowest specific gravity of any synthetic and natural fiber. They are having the ability to give good bulk while translates into the good cover properties, uh, low moisture regain, they are quick drying ability since uh, the fiber does not absorb the moisture, they are possess the high excellent thermal bonding and they are having the good wickening characteristics. Uh, there are various and uh, vast uses of e these polyolefinic fibers like polyolefins, they have been used in the applications such as carpet, ropes, geotextiles, hygiene, non-women's, construction and technical textiles. They offer a good cost benefits for many applications. The polypropylene slit 
films and non filament are used in ropes agriculture nets flexible intermediates bulk containers polyolefin fibers they are also used in the furniture and equipment covering outside the furniture and more recently um, as artificial turf polypropylene in non women this includes the automotive fabrics geotextile disposable hospital clothings and industrial wipes they are also important in the polypropylene application some of the main use of the polypropylene in non women is the filtration media face mask to protect from viruses and pollutants and the battery separators the world consumes in excess of 2.5 million tons of polypropylene in non women today as per the 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 report submitted by the chemical market resource incorporates so the advantage made in the synthetic fiber industry to shape the polymer into the fiber of various shapes and sizes have led the revolution in the textile manufacturing and design the choice of polymer is critical in order to meet the specific requirement of textile fabrics polyester remains the most popular synthetic fiber due to its unique properties such as strength abrasion resistance and reasonable economics in highly demanding applications such as military and aerospace however the challenges can only met by the high performance fibers aramid and carbon fiber they are the some of the most popular fiber without standing mechanical properties so dear friends in this particular segment we discussed about the application of polymers in the the textile application we discussed about the various kind of the fibers and their uses their basic chemistry and for your convenience we have enlisted references which you can utilize as per your choice thank you very much